watch your back. Get down, lay down, house going down. Lay down or get down, house going down, down. Fourteen year term ordered in Hell's Angels death. This is gonna be an interesting one guys. That's where the Aryan Brotherhood gets involved in the Hell's Angel incident. Before I'm working it out. A reputed Aryan Brotherhood member was sentenced to fourteen years in state prison Friday for helping slay Hell's Angels leader Michael Irish O'Farrell at a bar in San Leandro nearly two years ago. The sentencing by Alameda County Superior Court Judge Stanley Gold fulfilled the terms of a plea bargain made by Aaron Edward Marsh, 24, on January 10th, when he pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter in connection with the slaying of O'Farrell at the Halfway Club on June 6, 1989. Interesting. According to court records, the slaying was part of a feud between the Aryan Brotherhood and the Hells Angels that started in 1983 after a drug deal between the two groups went sour. Marsh, who was from Salida in Stanless County, accompanied by fellow Aryan Brotherhood member Michael Bruce Shepard into the bar to look for O'Farrell, record says. Yeah, the AB and um, Hells Angels, even though they were a close-knit relationship in the beginning, sometime in the 80s they started to have a fallout. There was remarks by the Red Hells Angels that we're not white, we're red and white. According to court records, Marsh shot O'Farrell in the back. Pathologist Dr. Tom Rogers testified that O'Farrell's death was caused by both by Gunshot wounds and stabbing wounds. So this is an interesting one, man. Um, a, B, and Hell's Angels. A long, extensive history with each other. O'Farrell's death was caused both by gunshot wounds and stab wounds. It's also said that Marsh is a threat to the community and perhaps himself. and appears to be in need of personal, social, and psychological reconstruction. While in jail, Marsh struck a sheriff deputy in the face with a food tray. Then slugged the deputy, breaking the deputy's nose. So there was an incident that happened in uh, Folsom Hole back in the days where the Hells Angels and uh, AB were going at it. The original leaders, man, from my knowledge, they used to have a kind of a working relationship. And, um, you know, they both had similar agendas. H and H, HA started going a different direction as well as the AB. And I think it was the control thing behind the walls that kind of caused a lot of friction. Shepard is scheduled to stand trial later this year on murder charges in the O'Farrell case. O'Farrell was believed by law enforcement officials to rank in the Hells Angels hierarchy only behind the, the, the motorcycle club's spiritual leader, Ralph Sonny Barger Jr. Yeah, for a while, none of these HAs could rep represent their patches behind the wall, so a lot of them, when they get to prison, they leave that patch to the streets, and they only continue when they get out to the streets. This has been something that's been occurring for years. A lot of people have a different um, agenda and view of it, man, but from my personal knowledge, man, and from what I've heard, is that the brand will not let anybody actively push the HA agenda on any of the main lines. Like I said, back in Folsom, they were getting off. Um, this killing kind of, you know, validates everything that I said, that even though these two groups had a working relationship way back in the 60s and 70s, that was because a lot of uh, red and white members were locked up at that time. Since then, though, even to this day, they both have a whole different agenda. The red and white will work with all kinds of other uh, minorities and ethnicity groups, whereas the AB focuses on mainly uh, trying to control the white population, and whether it's on the streets or in prison. The HAs are pretty strong on the streets because they have a very big MC club, and they have uh, each member does their own independent outreach and their activities. But in prison, they, they don't hold nothing. They hold no water up in there, man. And I've seen a lot of them have, um, you know, pushed a whole different um, agenda there. And see, even some have even concealed their identities. Now, there's some that pretty much will align with, like, the white factions, but a lot do not. You know, another incident that was pretty much internationally known was uh, regarding the Hells Angels was the Margot Compton incident. And that the fact that they tried to farm out that uh, deed right to have her whacked and her kids and so forth uh, uh took him out which eventually happened to the Aryan Brotherhood um Mike Thompson actually rejected that because they didn't believe in uh you know the attacks being you know done to those that are underage if you get what I'm saying and later on he ended up uh, testifying and flip, flipping about the information about what really occurred with that incident man so 
you know, that kind of severed a little bit of ties between the two, man. There's been, like I said, there's been some supporters, man, of each other from the old, old Vanguard. But the ironic thing about this situation is it's even more interesting is that this individual, Aaron Hall, the AB member that killed this Hells Angel, in 1997, he was killed by the AB by a strangulation. Elliot Scott Grizzle was uh, found guilty of this charge. Um, basically, Spike some Pruno, got the stuff in there, strangled him, and all kinds of stuff. He waited until he was drunk, man. So it's kind of ironic. You can make this type of sacrifice, putting that type of work within your own criminal organization, only to be fucking deemed years later. Apparently, he didn't do a killing that, that the AB requested. The committee voted on it. They deemed him all bad. They put him in the hat. And I think the directors came from... Uh, they had a kite, but I think Deadeye actually, uh, Healy, actually is the one that sent word over there. And the funny thing about it is Deadeye ended up testifying right after. Um, he was only an AB member for about four years um, because he killed someone too as well. So it's just, you know, prison politics, killings and murders, man. This stuff is nothing new that you've been seeing here recently as far as on these lines. Before it used to happen in the shoe. And one of the ways that AB used to like to kill people was strangulation. You know what I'm saying? Because using a piece did not guarantee that you could take that person out. So they'd want you to get up in that cell, sacrifice your life by taking a life. That's how these groups operate, man. You know what I mean? It's it's a very uh, sensitive way of living. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing positive with it, man, but that's the truth, man. So, you know, the same man that killed this Hell's Angel, seven, eight years later, get, is killed himself by his own people. That people are forgetting to realize, man, is that I don't think... When you have a, the same racial makeup of a particular group that's operating in the same vicinity, on the streets, in prison, it's hard to coexist. You know, you could have that working relationship if that faction is a smaller subset, right? But when they kind of each operate independently, you're gonna have those that are gonna butt heads, have different ag agendas, different ideals and so forth, man. And I think that's what's pretty much has occurred within the red and white, as well as, uh, the AB. Now, other states it may be different. The Aryan Brotherhood over there in Massachusetts, there was a David Chalou and a Adam Hall. The first one was an AB, other one was Hell's Angels. They conspired together to take out a witness. So in some states it may be a little bit different, but in the California faction, man, they're both on two different pages, man. You know, um, you know the MC clubs, some of them have been more open to including other races. And as quiet as it's kept, right, as much as the Aryan Brotherhood has a working relationship with Southsiders and MA to a certain extent, they've had issues too now. Don't get me wrong, people forget about the conflict that happened in death row between the AB and the MA when they were at war. And it kind of transpired out there to level four yards. But um, for the most part, the fact that they're a white faction that is allowing people of other racial ethnicities into their clubs has kind of probably created a little sense of dissension. You know, the AB maybe was based upon a protection racket. I mean, as far as to protect white inmates um, behind the walls, you know, against other races. You know, there was conflicts between, you know, big big issue created between the AB and blacks back in the days. Um, now things are less racial motivated. You know what I'm saying? Now everything is about generating income. And so the more you have of these, uh, you know, smaller, uh, you know, group segments, factions, clubs, gangs, organizations that uprise, the more competition is for a market out there. You know, the market sometimes is only has limited space. As much game as there is on the lower level tiers, where these organizations want to be out there in, in, in the criminal element aspect of, of things, it's pretty really narrow. You know what I'm saying? So you have to sit there and, uh, uh, you know, dive in there. You know I mean, with the best intentions of going there. It's, you can't balance everything and have a working relationship with every group. You're gonna butt heads, you know? There's no way around it. If that was the case, all these other groups, man, there wouldn't be no wars, there wouldn't be no, uh, you know, uh, gang set tripping and so forth, man. Um, but this is just a quick spill, man. Uh, you know, I found this case kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if there's more behind it, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't sound like there was a, a request based upon uh, the Hells Angels to have this dealt with because this is the problem. And this is someone that you can't get. You always deal with your own kind by yourself. You know what I'm saying? And if an Aryan brother member, Brotherhood member can get close to an HA, I'm pretty sure another HA member can get close to him as well. That's the only time you farm things out like that, man. Otherwise, 
You take things, you take care of things within your own faction. You know what I'm saying? Especially in prison. You know, if if you know a white boy, no, excuse me, a white man messes up, if a crip, a blood, um, skinhead, Sudanian, whatnot, okay, depending on what the infraction is that occurs, you're not gonna sit there and you're gonna allow that group to clean it up. And it's up to you and your group to sit there and, and think if you can accept it or not. That's where a lot of the get-offs happen. A lot of the wars happen because certain groups will have conflicts, you know what I'm saying, with each other. They don't respect how that group dealt with that issue. Let it, but then again, it's not everybody's business to, to know how it's dealt with, you know. A lot of the conflicts that were happening between uh, the African groups or the black groups, black factions, and like Sudanos had to do with business transactions, you know what I'm saying, or an act of disrespect that in the course to most of these groups, they didn't like how it was dealt with. You know, whereas the Norteños and Sudanos, if you fall in fraction and endangering your people or almost causing any type of issue, you're gonna get dealt with accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Other groups, they may not. They may say, okay, we're gonna discipline, we'll deal with it on our own. And see, if that's not enough for your particular group, then you're gonna sit there and fuck it, we're gonna kick the shit off with everybody. You know, that's happened a couple times, man, like where we've had to do what we had to do based upon the fact that we know we're not gonna get the results that we want bringing this to a, bringing this to the table, you know? Everybody wants to be that dude that can sit there and say, okay, well, you know what? I defused this situation or whatnot, or I kicked off this get out, you know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of people who, you know what I'm saying, are placed in positions of leadership nowadays in prison. Or during my time here, things are a little bit different since they've been kicked out, but back then, you had people that were in leadership positions that could not make, you know, a rational decision. They made decisions based upon emotions, assumptions, insinuations, and so forth. And that's where you have all these conflicts arising. You know what I'm saying? Um, communication is always key. But then again, if you communicate too freely sometimes with some of these factions, you know, some of these factions may take that as a weakness and try to, you know what I'm saying? People are deceptive. You know, conflicts are very crafty, man. And if you can manipulate another group into doing your bidding or pushing what your agenda is, you're winning. You know, it's common sense. And that's how prison operates, man. People got the game twisted, man. They think that everything is supposed to go in accordance to this set procedure and so forth. Man, things don't always act like that, man. You know, prison politics, street politics, they kind of, you know, unilaterally, they work together. Not everybody wants to have that same type of uh, uh, thinking process, but that's the truth, man. You know, prime example, look what's going on in Sacramento. You know, with all the rap game and street politics, eventually that stuff's gonna, gonna you know, end up in, pr in the people behind the wall's hands. And it's gonna be a whole different outcome. Anyways, man, I thought this bill was interesting. You know, um, two different types of, of groups. In the beginning, they were almost kind of parallel in a sense, and the relationship was a little bit stronger. You know, um, more with the old timers, like I said before. Now, like, even if you, you watch some of these uh, uh, new individuals that are pushing the agenda for the uh, red and white, they don't even look like the old biker types, you know, fucking long hair, fucking been up for fucking five days, fucking cranking the fucking in the back of the thing and let's just go. Nah, they don't have that. Those stereotypes are no longer there. Some of them are businessmen. Some of them have good jobs, you know, and not every one of them is involved in illicit activities. Let's get that first and foremost. But there is within these groups that it led to involve themselves in illicit activities, which doesn't necessarily mean that these clubs have that main focus, right? But it does have members that are going to engage. You know what I mean? It is what it is, man. Anyways, it's your boy Flacco, Convict's Perspective. I'm out.